goodness. How many hate tests? Oh, oh, Tenny's like, yeah, I saw that hand. Nobody likes tests except if you're a teacher, right? You you give the test. It's like, but you got to make sure that, you know, your students know the information before you take the test, right? And so you got to teach it. And then if they, if if they learn it, they absorb it, they, they get it, they get it. And, um, and you know, but everything is tested. Aren't you glad that the steel on your car was tested? Aren't you glad that the fuselage on the airplane that you took last time was tested? Aren't you glad that the, uh, you know, that the load of that semi-truck in front of you that was really weighed down with that big bulldozer was tested. Oh, man. I tell you, when, aren't you glad that this building was, was tested and inspected and it passed tests? Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, just think, if we, if we had no tests, you know, we just, oh, it looks good, all right, you know, for, for, you know medical tests, right? If you don't have the medical tests, how would you know what procedures to get, right? They could just figure it out. They could just maybe cut you open and be like, oh, you know what? Uh, that would be my, my uh, way of doing things, you know, which wouldn't be good. I'm like, ah, oh, it's not good. Oh, that looks pretty good. That looks all right, you know. The blood's red, you know, hey. Yeah. But you got to have the test. You got to have the test to know what's going on. You have to take the test. And as we continue to talk about, you know, just legacy faith, we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 11, and we recognize that, that we will have to go through some tests to prove our faith and, uh, and to strengthen our faith. To prove our faith and to strengthen our faith, there has to be a test, right? There ha- if life was just without tests, without any issues, without any struggles, oh, did you guys get the, uh, the, the anybody need any uh, handouts? Handouts, you guys good? We got handouts. Um, uh, so, um, but if we go through life in, in, in our, in our spiritual walk, we, without tests, we're, we're not, we're going to be pretty, uh, pretty lackadaisical in our faith, right? If we don't really believe who God is, that God is who he says he is, how will we know that God is who he says he is unless we've go, we've gone through the test? And so often we want to serve God on our own terms, Right? We want to serve God on our own terms. We want to we we want to to set the agenda, and we expect God to bless our agenda. You want God to we expect God to bless our plans, our terms, our way. Our comfort has to be the most important, but that's not the way God works. God doesn't work in those terms. We will step out. We. We will step out in faith as long as it's possible within my own resources. Mm. How many have ever been doing that? Oh, you know what? God, it's got to be within my own resources, within my own agenda, within my own plans, within my own comfort. We'll step out as long as it's within my own limitations, as long as it doesn't require any real pain or any real sacrifice. I'll step out. But that's not the way faith works. You look at Hebrews chapter 11, there's never an instance in any of the examples where there's not going to be any sort of pain or sacrifice involved. There is trusting that God is able to meet something that is beyond their own ability. And Abraham is no exception. Commendable Hebrews 11 faith is giving up our very best for God's very best. Giving up our very best for God's very best. Believing God's perfect promise. Trusting Him throughout all, through it all. Knowing that He is more than enough. God will always stretch us. He will always test our faith. And He will always show us that He alone is faithful. And the test will always prove that. The test will always prove that God can be trusted. The test will always prove that God has a plan, and his plan is the best. 
The test will always encourage and confirm our faith because our faith is in God. Our faith isn't in ourselves. Our faith isn't in somebody else. Our faith isn't in our employer. Our faith is in God's Word. Amen? That's a stretch, right? That's tough. That's tough. But the test will always reveal the truth about our faith. The test will always reveal the truth about our faith. The test will reveal whether our faith is all talk or real action. The test will reveal how we see God and show us that God is all that his word declares that he is and more. That's what the test will determine. It will determine that in our life. And in Hebrews 11, we're talking about Abraham again this week. But in Hebrews chapter 11, we see that God promised Abraham. But in order to receive what God promised, he had to leave. He had to leave a country that he was currently living in. He had to leave his own house, his own family, his own friends, his own job, his own identity to go to a different land around different people that wasn't even his own land. That's faith, right? And in that faith, there has to be some sort of sacrifice, right? There had to be some sort of pain. Could you imagine giving up all of those things that we love and we, we seek and we are very comfortable around? But yet, at 75, that's where God said to Abraham, leave the country that you're in and go to the land of promise. Leave the country that you're in and go to the land of promise. God sent Abraham to an unknown land, but a promised land. A land currently occupied with his wife, his, his, his possessors, or his possessions, setting up and tearing down tents in a land that doesn't sound like a lot of fun, does it? Setting up, tearing down at 75, setting up and tearing down tents in a land that, they, he, didn't, that they, he didn't own, but God promised. God promised his descendants would possess. And they were living in a land they did not possess without any children to pass on that promise. So they were in a land that wasn't theirs, and God said that, they're, that, that you're going you're gonna to see generation upon generation, and, and, and there's going to be multitudes. That you won't be able to number the descendants that you have. But he was 100 years old, and, he was, and his wife was barren at 90 years old. But God showed his promise by giving him Isaac. And the situation was no longer possible. It was no longer possible. But God always honors faith. Isaac was born. God's promise was fulfilled. He used a barren old lady and a very old man late in the game and car to carry out his promises. To carry out his promise. Now they can retire. Now they right? They've already, you know what? They're 100 years old, right? I mean, no, that retiring is not a biblical thing. <laughs> You don't see anybody in the Bible. They don't, they don't retire. They still get tests, even after retirement. Right, Bruce? Come on. <laughs> you still go through the test. And you still see that God's faithful. But even at 100 years old, Isaac was born. Isaac was a teenage boy, 12, 13 years old. And God put Abraham through yet another test. Yet another test. But God showed Abraham one more test. So if you've got your Bibles, we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 through 22. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 through 20, 22. Who got, who, who's got their Bibles? You got two of them? Oh, where are they at? Where are they at, Larry? Oh, there we <laughs> Hey! There we go. So you got, you better trust the one that's on the screen. Because <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, starting at verse, what verse? 17. There we go. I was seeing if you guys were paying attention. 17 through 22. It says this. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promise 
was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob was dying, blessed each of his sons, uh, each of the sons of Joseph, bowing and worshiping over the head of the staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. That's legacy faith, church. That's legacy faith. Pray. Father, I thank you that you are faithful. God, that you are faithful from one generation to the next, from one test to the next. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are always good. God, that you are always faithful. Lord, help us, God, to trust you. God, help us, Lord, to look to you right now, God, because we have great things in store. You have great things in store for us but we have to trust you for it. Bless each and every one of us. Help us to walk and be encouraged and walk out that faith that you've called us to. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So do you have any but God, I hate tests, excuses, right? Do you have any excuses? You know, I would serve you. God, I would serve you. I would serve you, but but God... I would, but but God, I, I, need, I need you to do this for me first. But God, I, I, I will trust you, but I, but I have trust issues. God, I would serve you. I would obey you, but I first need to know the why, the where, and the how. God, if I knew all those things, God, I would trust you. Sometimes that's why God doesn't reveal the why and the no and the how. You know, you know, just think if Abraham knew all of that. He'd say, you know what, forget it. It's just one bite at a time. You eat the elephant, what? One bite at a time. That's how we walk our faith, one bite at a time. We don't know the why and the where and the how, but God, but God does. But God does. I've been, I, you know, I, maybe, maybe you say, you know, I've been burned in the past. I've been disappointed. I've been hurt. I have issues trusting people. I would, I would, but God, God says, I know your issues. I know your resistance. God knows your past. And I know you want to be in control. Thank you for being honest. <laughs> I can work with honesty. I can work with those honest issues and, and the struggles that you have. And God says, let me walk with you through this. God says, let me show you who I am and just get to know me. Just get to know me as, I, as you step out, as you walk with me, spend time with me, talk with me, hear from me, listen to me, trust me. As you do that every day, one step at a time, I'm going to, you know, I, I, I'm going to give, I'm going to give, you know, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen, but God, I know. I know what your word says. I know what your word says. I'm going to leave. I'm not going to leave you high and dry. God says, I'm not going to leave you high and dry. I will walk with you through it all, but you're going to have to trust me. Abraham, he said, that, you know, he heard that from God. You know, you may not understand the how, but I tell you what, God still has a promise in store. But... There's going to give you a test. God says, but I'm still going to give you a test. You're going to be tested. So the question is, are we ready for the test? Are we ready for the test? You know, Abraham, he left his native country. He became the father of Isaac at 100 years old. He sacrificed a lot for God, and God was faithful. He received God's promise Son, and so Abraham could just enjoy the latter years of his life, but God had one more test. The test, could, you know, would, would, you know, would Abraham be willing to give up his 
give up God's promise? Would Abraham be willing to give up God's promise, his prized possession, his son through impossible circumstances? Impossible. So everything that happened was impossible. It was an impossible circumstance that God already carried out all of this, that the, that the child of the promise was born by supernatural means. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Miles. Just kidding. But his prized possession, his son, he was born, and, and that's exactly how God put the test to Abraham. You know, doing well on a test, it requires us to know the material. If we're going to do well on the test, we have to know the material. Listen, Abraham knew the material. Abraham knew the material. He knew exactly what the test was going to be. Abraham knew the material. He knew God's faithfulness. He knew God's power. If we're going to do well on the test, we've got to know the material. Verses 17 and 18, Hebrews 11, it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered Isaac up. And he who had received the promise was in the act of offering his only son to whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. God spoke that to Abraham. It was going to be through Isaac, not through Ishmael. Ishmael was, you know, that was, that was, that was, that was Abraham and Sarah's plan right there. That, that, was, that was definitely possible. But God made a way. The promise was through something that was impossible, through a woman who was barren at 90 years old. And God said that through Isaac shall your offspring be named. Listen, Abraham walked with God. He listened to God. He trusted him and was true to his word. So when God gave this major test that would have destroyed everything that God promised, everything that God, how God was going to fulfill this promise, listen, Abraham was ready because he knew God. Abraham was ready because he knew the material to pass the test. It's not our promise, listen. And, and, and Abraham was, was willing to let it go. He said, it's not my promise. It's God's promise. It's not my promise. It's God's promise. And I'm going to have to let it go. And and trust that God has a promise in store for me. And if God wants to change how he fulfills his promise, we must trust him. Remember, it's not ours. It's not ours. It's his. Does that give us some freedom? That God's word is all and more than he says that he is. We just need to say, you know what? God makes the promises his way according to his timetable, not ours. Not ours. God commanded Abraham to give up his son, the son of his promise. Even though God did not let Abraham take Isaac's life, Abraham did not know God's response until the very end of the story, but he knew God. He simply trusted that God will be faithful to his word and to his promise. God gives this command in order to test Abraham's faith. In, in, instead of taking Abraham's son, God gave Abraham a whole nation of descendants through Isaac. But we have to be willing to give up the promise because it's not ours to begin with. We have to be willing to give up the promise. God knew that God had the... Or Abraham knew that God had the power to do the impossible, even resurrecting his son from the dead. God was able to do it. Verse 19, it says, He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did not receive him back. Abraham was willing to give up everything God promised because he knew God, and he knew that he knew that God had the power to resurrect his promise into something even better. God had the power to resurrect his promise even into something that is better. And it's like, how can it be even better than this? 
we trust that God has something even better. We have to be willing to say, you know what? It's not mine to begin with. It is God's. It is God's. Abraham heard from God, and he knew God, and he trusted his promise. You know, if we're afraid to trust God, you know, with your most prized possessions, your greatest dreams, or, or your most dearly loved people, lean on what Abraham and Hebrews, Abraham's Hebrews 11 faith. It's not our deal. It's God's deal. It's not our deal. It's God's deal. He, ch- he just chose to use us to fulfill his work, to fulfill his plan, to carry out this legacy faith. God chose to use us. It may not be immediate. It may not be in the form of material blessing. Mater- but listen, material things, they, they, they should be among the least satisfying of all rewards. Because we take it, we leave it here. It's not even going to be taken up. Because listen, God has given us our reward awaits an eternal, an eternal reward, an eternal blessing. That's the blessing that God has for us. And that can only be received through faith. He, um, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Paul says this. You know, when you, when you consider Isaac, I, I always consider Isaac. And I think Isaac was a 12-year-old boy. And Isaac was willing to be tied up and placed on the wood as a sacrifice. He was the willing sacrifice. You, you, it took faith and it took trust. <laughs> Trusting his dad, saying, you know what? All right. God, we're, you know, and Isaac was like, where's the sacrifice? Where's the sacrifice? And Abraham said, God will provide. God will provide. But Isaac was, on the, was alive. He was living. He became that sacrifice. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, in the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. It's offering ourselves to God. Our worship is more than a song. Singing is easy. Sacrifice is hard. When we offer ourselves to God as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, that's where we're going to be tested because we're going to have pressure. There's going to be pressure in this world that, that tries to pull us away, that tries to distract us. We live in a constant state of worship as we daily offer ourselves to God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, not conforming to the pattern of this world, not wanting more of what this world promises, material stuff, success, leisure. But when we offer ourselves to God, when we're here at church, when we say, God, use me in ministry. God, use me to reach my neighbor. God, use me to reach my community. God, I offer myself to you as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to you. When we offer ourselves to God, As that living sacrifice, God will transform us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Then we can discern God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. When we say, God, this is what I have. Use me for your glory. When we we surrender all to, just like Isaac. Isaac surrendered everything. He said, God, you're going to provide. You're going to take care of the sacrifice. I am just wanting to be used by you. Abraham knew that. Isaac learned that from his dad. Are you ready to pass the test? Are you ready for the test? Because listen, are we, are we, are we blessing others in the faith? That's the second thing. Are we blessing others in the faith? Because we can look at Isaac. Isaac in the same light as Abraham. As we walk with Jesus, our faith is built up. We continue to study and prepare and then pass those faith tests. God will bless us. God will bless us. And as a result, God will bless others. Verses 20 and 21 of Hebrews 11, it says, By faith, Isaac invoked future blessing on, J- on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob was, was dying 
blessed each of his sons, the sons of Joseph, bowing to worship over the head of his staff. Here we see blessing. The blessing confirmed by aged fathers on their sons. You know, before before the father died, this is this is biblical tradition. This is we look at the patriarchs. This is what they did. They blessed their sons. He, they performed a ceremony of blessing in which he officially handle, handed over the birthright to the future heir. In, in, in those times, it was a patriarch. The, the male was the, was the patriarch. It was the name uh, of the father, and, 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 the, and the sons would carry on that name, and there was a blessing invoked to it. There was a birthright, and then there was a blessing. And before the blessing was given, the father would take the birthright away from the oldest son and give it to the more deserving son. So when you look at when you look at Jacob and Esau, Esau was the oldest, but Jacob was the one who God blessed, and God used Jacob to become Israel. That blessing was carried down from generation to generation. But, the, but after the blessing was given, the, the birthright could no longer be taken away. This is why fathers usually waited late in life to pronounce the blessing. Blessings are important. Blessings are important then. Blessings are important now. And they were looking forward to the future. As they conferred blessing on their children, they trusted in God's future promises and were able to trust their children to their future. They were, they were able to trust the children and say, God, these are, these are your kids. You know, we dedicate our kids to the Lord, right? When they're little, when they're little, when they're little. So we dedicate them to the Lord and say, God, they're not mine, they're yours. These are your children. And as, as we pass away, as we pass on, we're going to pass on that blessing from generation to generation. But they trusted, they trusted God for the future of their children. Faith in the promise in the promises of God allowed Jake Isaac to bless his sons concerning things to come. The promises that were to come. They blessed their blessed they, they blessed their children. You know, we may not know the future, but we know that God does what God does, and he, we trust the next generation will be blessed because of God's presence, because of God's blessing. Our blessings are powerful, church. How we bless other people is powerful. James chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, it says, with, with, with it we bless, talking about our mouth, our tongues, it says, with it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be. The same mouth, how many can relate to that? Sometimes you open your mouth and it's like you speak it. It's like toothpaste coming out of the tube, you know, and you can't put it back in. Our words have that same power. Our words have power behind them. We can worship God and we can curse others with the same mouth. James says this should not be. That's why it's important that we are full of faith. Because listen, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Whatever our heart is filled with, if we are filled with the things of God, if we are filled with God's word, if we are filled with the Holy Spirit, that's what's going to come out of our mouth. We walk with Jesus. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit, living according to his word, and we know and we believe and we obey in faith. Faith is caught, not taught. Faith is caught more than it is taught. It is taught, but it's also caught. You have to see it lived out. I tell you, I could preach and preach and preach. If I'm not, if I am not living it at home, it's not gonna, it's not gonna translate to my kids. If we are living it in church, if we're worshiping God, but we're not living it at home, it's not gonna translate to our kids. It's a blessing that God wants to instill in the next generation. Because the next generation needs strong faith. The next generation 
needs strong faith. We are building generational faith. Are we building generational faith? Are we building generational faith? You know, it's, I learned today, well, not today, I've learned that you look at Gen Z, we're in Gen, like our teenagers now, Gen Z. Gen Z, only like 4 to 7% of Gen Z believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. They believe, the, 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 that that's that's pretty sad to hear when you when you embrace when you look at that statistic because they there, there's been a there's been a disconnect with the faith there's been a disconnect with the faith when we we are called to to to, to reach out from one generation to the next. Listen, in the generation that we're living right now, we, we are called to live it out. When we build from one generation to the next, they will not have the same challenges that we had. But, but God never changes. God never changes from one generation to the next. God's word never changes from one generation to the next, even though the challenges are different, even though they relate differently. People relate differently now because, because of technology. Whether we like it or not, that's just the way people look at the world. Instead of looking at how God sees it and how the, world, how the Word of God embraces it. Listen, that's what we need to accept. That's what we need to, to know that we're up against. That's why preaching the Word of God, that's why reading the Word of God, that's why declaring the Word of God is so important because we're not, we're not going to be able to build generational faith unless we are in the Word of God ourselves. It cannot be just a Sunday thing. It has to be a daily thing that we get in that habit, that we get in the Word, that we pray for our kids, that we pray for for God to use us, Lord, help us, God, empower us through your Holy Spirit. Because listen, after Joseph, Joseph's generation and their children, the children of Israel, they, were, they faced so many difficult challenges. You look at after Joseph, what's the next book after Genesis? Exodus, right? And, 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 and it's, it's a 400-year gap that takes place after Joseph. 400 years, four generations of, of people, they were, they were enslaved to, to the Egyptians. But yet Joseph said in verse 22, he says, By faith, Joseph at the end of his life made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave direction concerning his bones. Why is that so important? Well, because Joseph saw that tough times were coming. And bad things were going to happen. Four generations, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were going to be enslaved to the Egyptians for 400 years. Bad things were going to take place. But after that, God was going to deliver them from the, from, the, from the Egyptians. God was going to set them free and bring them to the land of the, that God promises he said, don't leave my body, don't leave my bones in Egypt. He could have, you know, he could have been buried with other pharaohs. He could have, you know, Joseph, he was a hero in Egypt. Joseph, he's, he, he, uh, he was, um, you know, God, God used Joseph to save the Egyptians from a severe famine in that region. Is because the dreams that God gave Joseph, that God used him. And so Joseph, he could have been, he could have been enshrined in the in the in the history books of the Egyptians. But that's not what Joseph decided. Joseph said, listen, I don't want to be known as somebody who changed the history of Egypt. I want to be known as fulfilling God's promise, speaking God's promise in faith. But Joseph, he believed God. He said, don't leave my body in Egypt. He believed God. He trusted God. Joseph, he believed that, that God had better things for his story, that he wanted his children to remember God's promises. Genesis chapter 50, verses 24 through 26 
it sums up the story before Joseph died at 110 years old. It says, it says, and Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but, but God will visit you and bring you up out of this land into the land where he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph made the sons of Israel swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry my bones from here. So Joseph died being 110 years old. They embalmed him, and he was in the coffin, in a coffin in Egypt. He was there for 400 years, and we look and we see as they were at, at 400 years later, they, they, they knew that. They, they said, all right, we're going to give our father that wish, that, 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 that last blessing and saying, you know what, take me from Egypt and bring me to the land of the promise. That was a faith journey. Don't, don't say, you know, you know, Joseph, he didn't want to remain in, in Egypt, but he wanted to go to the land of the promise. He wanted his body to be there. So, so you know, but you're thinking, well, what does this have to do with anything? Joseph is not in the body. You know, you know, you know he's, He's with the Lord, you know, but, but he wanted the people to see, to see that God is faithful. God is faithful. When you're in Egypt, God is faithful. When you're struggling with circumstances, God is still faithful. There is still promise that God still has for us. Don't say this for my own sake. Don't, don't, you know, but, but, but for you, I, I, you know, I don't say this for my own sake. That's what Joseph thought. I don't say this for my own sake, but I say this for your sake. Let God's promise encourage you when things are tough, when life is at its worst, when everyone seems to be against you. God still has a promised land in store for you. The land that you are enslaved to is not your home. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. Church, stay faithful. Live out that legacy faith in your generation to pass down to the next. Even if you're the first one, even if generation one begins with you, carry it through to the next generation. Listen, we have to live it out. We have to live it out. God has a purpose and plan for each and every one of us. You know, Exodus chapter 3, verse 6, when, 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 when Moses was in, was in the desert, the burning bush, this is what... This is what how God introduced himself. He said, God said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of J Jacob. And Moses hid his face and was afraid to look at God. He's the God of the living church of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. If he's faithful to Abraham, if he's faithful to Isaac, if he's faithful to Jacob, listen, he is still, after years of enslavement in the desert, in Egypt, listen, I tell you what, it doesn't matter what your circumstances look like presently. God is still faithful. He is still good, and he still has a plan for your life. Carry that through to the next generation. Live out that faith, and even if you're tested, listen, you're going to be tested. Oh, are you ready for the test? Are you ready for the test? Are you blessing others in faith? And are you passing down your faith to the next generation church? It's not going to be easy. But I'm telling you what, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. 400 years later, God still introduces himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Always remember that. That there is power in your influence. There's power in your faith. You are influencing other people to follow Jesus because you are walking out that step-by-step -step faith journey. Even when things are tough, even when things are difficult, even when things, they, you know, circumstances try you. 
and you feel like giving up, just go to the Lord and say, God, help me. Help me to be strong in you. Lord, help me to know that you are good, that you are faithful. God, help me to walk in that blessing that you've called me to live out. God, I don't want to give up because, God, you've never given up on me. And he never will. His promise is for us, church. His promise is for us. It could have died with Isaac. But Abraham said, you know what? If it's going to die with Isaac, he's going to raise him up from the dead. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came. He went to a cross. Three days later, he raised from the dead. That's the power of God. The same power that raised Jesus from the grave lives in us, church. He lives in us. Be faithful. Live it out. Trust God. God is not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He is always going to be faithful through it all. Lord, we thank you for your word. God, I thank you that you have encouraged us, God, that even when things are difficult, even when things are unknown, God, we know that you, Lord, that you, that you, that you want us to, to carry out that legacy faith, starting here. God, even if we're, we're generation number one, God, that we would live it out. God, that our kids would see that, Lord, you are faithful. God, that we would continue to bring our kids before you and pray for them and pray with them and read the word of God with them and not be, not be intimidated or not be afraid, you know, because I know culture and, 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 and there's so many th- other voices that are crying out for our attention. But, God, your word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, you are always faithful through it all, Lord. Help us to walk out that faith faith, to live out that faith journey, because we know that you are using us. God, that you are using us, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord, to, to, to Lord, just to follow you, Jesus, to follow you. No matter where it takes us, that we would say, God, less of me, more of you. Lord, have your way. Have your way in each and every one of us, Jesus. You know, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, maybe today, you know, you 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 know, you know what you've heard, you've heard about faith, but right now you don't have a whole lot of faith. Right now you're struggling with your faith. You know, maybe you're just going through some some tough times right now, and and you think, man, I, I just don't know if you know, with all the things that are going on, with all the circumstances that are going right right now. I just, I need encouragement. I need to get back on track. Maybe this morning that's you. You just need, you just need prayer. You just need God to do a work in your life right now. You may be discouraged. You may be struggling. Just lift up your hand and say, you know what, Pastor, please, please pray for me. Please pray that I, that I, that I'm faithful in walking it out. Pray that I'm faithful in, in, in ministering to my kids, to, to showing Jesus to my kids, to showing Jesus to my neighbors, that they have such a clear, just a real representation of who Jesus is through how I talk or how I live. If that's you, just lift up your hand and say, you know what, Pastor, I, I, need, I need the Holy Spirit to empower me. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. God, I just thank you. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace. God, I thank you, Lord, that you want us just to continue one step at a time. Live for you. Walk with you. God, you know our insecurities. You know our struggles. You know what we deal with every day, God. And I pray, Lord, that even through all of that, God, that we would see that you are faithful. God, that we would walk it out empowered by your Holy Spirit to fulfill the work that you've called us to fulfill. God, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the people that you've surrounded us with, God. Lord, our family, our neighbors, God, our community. Lord, I pray that you would help us. 
God, just to be a light into our community, to be a light into my family. God, help me, Lord Jesus, to live it out, God. And Lord, even when I, when I blow it, when I mess up, when I maybe lash out in anger, I say things that, that I shouldn't have said. Lord, help me to be humble. God, and recognize that and just be honest and say, I'm, just a, I'm a work in progress, but God's faithful. I'm a work in progress, but God is faithful. Lord, as we look at these patriarchs, we see, we see that they messed up. They, they didn't live a perfect life, but God, we know that even, even with all that, Lord, you still gave them grace, that you still use them for your glory. God, I pray, Lord, you would help us to, to remember that. You're not looking for perfection. But, Lord, you're looking to be for us to be obedient, for us to be willing to be used by you, Jesus. Lord, I pray that blessings this week. Lord, I pray blessings on families as they, Lord, as we go on to our Thanksgiving holiday meals and our family gatherings. Lord, I pray that you would use this time to, uh, to bless and to minister, God, to encourage those who we are around this, this week. And, Lord, we just ask for your strength today, God. Minister through us. Use us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Isn't God good? God is so good. You know what? I probably won't see you, most of you, until Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving. From Aaron and I, happy Thanksgiving. We love you guys. Have a blessed, blessed uh, holiday season. And uh, we'll be back on Sunday, right? We will be back on Sunday. Love you guys. Ha, ha, ha.